Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Wally Mike. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. There we go. Well, well, Mike, you, you've been looking forward to this, <laughs> haven't you? I've, I've been looking at this box set since I first came up here uh, <laughs> a year ago. This one? Uh, well, it was Guts and Glory first of all, but then you showed me that one. Yeah. And I'm taken. You're taken. <laughs> so much so that I'm taking it. <laughs> Literally, this is his Christmas present, as it were. We're going to cellophane off these boxes and we'll be right back to review them for you. All right, then. I'll push these to a side and we'll talk about this one first. So the first thing to say about this is now that they've uh, the product has matured a little bit, there's some, there's some new sprue in here, which we'll talk about, and a new building type is that it's now available in more than one kind of entry point. Yeah. So the original release of this, it was just infantry with a bit of scenery, and it was like £100. Yeah. It's like a pretty high price point for someone getting in. So now they still do a big start set. This is bigger than the one before. There's even more to it, and it's more than just infantry sprues, which has got color plastic, two different colors. Yeah. But they provided a smaller box which is still a, an entry point, but that's more aimed at the single player rather than both sides. That's what yeah. Got Some Glory is. So you want to take the lid off and reveal the contents within. So, contains more than 750 figures. More than 750 figures, that's a lot of figures. Yeah. Black powder rule book. Very nice. Plastic cage books and yeah. The paper and the, the, the rules booklet and the scenery, they're all behind a box top, uh, yep. so that the sprues are not dinging them up. Yep, it's got that yep. lovely fresh smell. Black powder, American Civil War. Booklet, uh, we're so, gonna have a look at that in a bit more detail. So I understand this narrows down, whereas black powder's a whole yeah. epoch, this is yeah. the specific rules for these regiments and... Exactly, exactly, yeah. This, this covers the whole period. Whereas uh, with the Napoleonic series they did, they kind of rewrote the rule book and, and took out all of the bits that don't involve it. This is the general one. And if you've not seen these before, this is just the standard rule book, just scaled down to A5. There's nothing cut out of this rule book. Full black powder Sarissa rolls. MDF scenery. Sarissa Precision MDF scenery. Yep. So in, with this set, you get the barn, uh, which is handy because we had that before. So I've actually made a couple of these. This is how that comes out. Um, these kind of Dutch style farmhouses and barns. And I like that because it, it immediately, I love a bit of scenery in a star set. Yeah. I think it kind of instantly transports you to the unique setting that you're dealing with. And this, I don't know to Americans how iconic this is, but yeah. to Europeans, we don't have this type of barn at all. We see this in movies. So this kind of instantly places there. Same with the snake fencing. Yeah. I don't I don't even get it. I mean, it seems really space inefficient. It's energy efficient because you just let, lap the bolt. There's it's, no, it's no, quick and easy to no digging fence holes, no nailing them together. You just lay down oh, a beam. it's like dry stone wall yeah. and it's all just relies on gravity to hold it yeah. together. A, a lot of the other times it was just that they build up a bank of earth and rock. Right. And then they would just lay down two X's and then they'd put a bar on top of it. Right. So you'd have a, a berm and then yeah. a, a wooden pole. There's no digging. Mm. I, I think some of the soils in the, the, the Americas were very tough to dig. Right. So rather than digging hundreds of fence holes, they came up with this system where yeah. they just lay... And is it part of that whole kind of drive to the west? Land is free. You just, yeah. Just, yeah. But you've got to put a fence on it for it yeah. to be yours. Yeah. You're 160 like, acres after after a point, wouldn't it? You know, and the wagon runs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all of that. So you want it, fence you put up quick. It's, it's very so quick. I don't mine. know how safe it was against cattle, but on, on farmland it was probably... It's an arable farmland. Yeah. 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 All right. You get that. Box topper with a quick reference sheet. And on the back, casualty, casualty markers. markers. So I don't think this was in the previous set. I don't think it had this. Yeah. As about, I think it had a box topper, but I think it was just a piece of white cardboard. Yeah. Uh, but crib sheet and casualty markers, really nice. Oh. And it's a pretty decent crib sheet. It's yeah. got all the stats. Yeah, I've been reading up on black powder before coming up here because I'm a, I'm a novice to it. Right, right. So, yeah, everything seems to be there that we need to be looking at. So, just to show that, it's, it's nicely produced, pretty yeah. to a pretty high definition. Good solid card. All right. Morella. Packed by Morella, so we know it's pro. So, what do I want to get here? on to the sprues. So, this Two, is the Gotts and Glory set. Six. Nine sprues here. 
nine sprues and they're mixed. Cool. Yep. So the first sprue type that we've got is the standard infantry sprue, which you've seen before. So we won't labor this one too much. Ooh, just need to push this out of the way so I get some space in front of me. Um, have a quick look at this. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. The way these work, if you see that it shows the movement trays or the, yeah. the base, that comes with proprietary basing. Um, is you're expected to put two ranks of these on each of these bases. So most of these, the, to make to make it cost effective for them to make, because it's not the it's not the making of the sprues, the manufacture of them that cost the money. It's the molds. So what they did, this is a, was a really big experiment for them in terms of how successful it was going to be. Um, is they want to put as much variety on one sprue as possible. So your cannon is on here, your, your, your front half, and that's quite a clever piece of engineering to keep it all lateral so it'll work in an injection mold. The cannon um, and the gun carriage are one piece, and then each side, each wheel and crew are again yeah. adjacent, and that's about the manufacturing process. But I think each of these ranks of 10 guys is very slightly different. So it's not Napoleonic, so they're not quite in a perfect straight line. And that's quite, you know, as you run your finger yeah. along, you can see, and they're not quite identical. Now you, you, you've got, a, and you've got a mixture of hats and so forth. So if you're making your um, union troops with these, you might be a bit less happy about how many of them are wearing a different hat. Yeah. Because the unions generally were well equipped with brand new stuff for a brand new army yeah. in every campaign. Whereas your Confederate stuff are a bit more, bit more ragged looking, because um, yeah. of the manufacturing differences. Um, but this, this kind of is intended to be used for both. Yes. What, what you're going to do here? One of them has got a standard type guy. One of them is like a command. space. So you've got an officer waving a saber and a guy with a flagpole, yeah. and they're expecting you for a standard size foot unit. And this is going to be five bases wide. So that's nice because it means your command stands in the middle. Yes. Because you're either in a march column or you're in a line in the American Civil yeah. War. <laughs> None of this square column of attack yeah. nonsense. You're either marching or you're fighting. It's Absolutely. Absolutely. So in terms of building a formation in the early part of the war, the very early sort of, uh, part of the war, the armies still remain relatively small. The largest formation you're likely to see is a division. Yeah. The core system comes in late. The core system exists, but the armies are not organised yeah. into cores. And the fighting component is the brigade. So you'd probably be looking to make two brigades each of three regiments. Yeah. And that's not that's not spot on, but it's not it's not wrong either. You know, no. if, you're, if you're playing kind of bull run era stuff. That's the, the, the average was five regiments to a division, but they would never to ever a brigade. Fall. Sorry. Yeah. To a brigade, but they would never ever full strength anyway yeah after the beginning yeah. so you know the, the, the structure will be mm. pretty regular yeah so and that and that's useful because that gives you more than one major maneuver element in black powder yeah. so just to get you going you get to so get three uh six regiments of infantry yeah. there the other thing is the way that they've scaled if you look in the booklet and it tells you about like larger and smaller units which definitely is a thing. I think they're three and seven. Yeah, three, five, and seven are your sizes in terms of number yeah. of stands. So you can still mix it up within that brigade. You can have one brigade which is under strength and one which is over strength, for example. It's putting five as a middle point. Yeah. But then the next brew is brand new. So we saw this at Warlord Day. Yep. I think you took a blurry photograph of it in a, in a cabinet. I did, yes. We, 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 we were... We, excitement got the better of some of the photographs we took, I think. So this has got um, three things on it. It's got skirmishing infantry, which are in fact dismounted cavalry is what they're intended to be. Yeah. And then you've got ranked up infantry. And finally, you've got, you've got your cavalry. So um, this ranked up infantry, Mike. Zwarves. Zwarves. Um, we, were, we were having a little bit of a conversation. So... What is a Zouave, Mike? French colonial African infantry. You heard that right. In the American Civil War, they had French colonial African <laughs> infantry. 
The French colonial African infantry wore pantaloons, chasseau like, jackets, like, like, like bell-shaped, baggy trousers. baggy trousers. Think of um, some kind of comedy show featuring an Egyptian guy, <laughs> like a carry-on <laughs> film with a yeah. random Egyptian yeah. magician. That costume is what Zouars were wearing. Yeah. Pantaloons, and then they wore chasseurs, jackets, lots of gold braid and mm. trimmings. Uh, and then they even wore fezes. Or turbans. Fezzes or turbans. You heard it right there. <laughs> they're not they're not Moroccans though. No. They, they are they are still Virginians and people from Massachusetts and other Louisiana places. Tigers were the Well the really famous one yes. of the Louisiana Tigers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th these are these are, you know, born and bred as much as anybody was in that period. Americans. But the the Federal Army before the before the Civil War um, was very um, interested in French military doctrine, yeah. French military style. Hence, the cap is the French style as well. The you know the uniform of the regular soldier. Yes. They're very much influenced by um, by the French military system because it was regarded in the 1860s as the most efficient military system in mm -hmm. the world. Turned out in the 1870s that that wasn't the case when they fought the Prussians, but certainly it was very highly respected yeah. at the time. So these Zouaves um, taking on this, taking on this, but how are they different then? I mean, they've got these magnificent uniforms and they are very colourful. I, I think some of the, the early regiments were raised by philanthropists rather than the military, so they bought their own uniforms. And they wanted to look like and that. And they wanted to look different. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to go with the cool but uniform. When it came down to fighting strength, they, they I suppose by wearing the uniforms, they felt themselves as, as elite. As an elite unit, yeah. And but, I think the Louisiana Tigers in particular were yeah. regarded. And, and so it, it's not one regiment, there's about five of them, aren't there? There, there are five regiments that were formed up, the Louisiana Tigers... Um, I think it's the second, third, fourth, and ninth. I think right. Louisiana's are my one of my books. We're all can called tigers. Yeah. yeah, right. So rather than in the in the Union Army, it was normally a regiment of Zouaves. Mm. Louisiana Tigers was a division. Right. So you know, five regiments forming. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so they're, they're very colourful. Um, Lots of different colour ranges. Um, yes. Again, there is. A, I've got a table at home, but and it's every colour of jacket and different colour yeah. of trousers. So y you're talking pink jackets with gold braids and yeah. bright blue pantaloons and a turban. You know yeah. it, those kind of uniform. And that I like as a gamer. I like that. I like that because I can feel that this regiment is special. Yeah. You know, it really stands out in in a sea of blue and grey. Or or button up if you if you yeah. take that particular particular view with your with your Confederates and both sides have them. So yeah. how, how many regiments in total did you say there were, Mike? There's the um, in the research the at Gettysburg, which we'll be covering in a minute because yeah. these are in there as well. The, yeah, there were ten regiments recognised as being Zouave regiments, mm -hmm. but by the time the, of Gettysburg, these uniforms are expensive. Yes. Um, only three regiments are recorded as actually fighting in full Zouave uniform for the Union. Right. Uh, some of the others still kept their fezes or their chasseur jackets. Some part of it. Yeah, just there. But not the whole game. And even, even the whole Louisiana Tigers were there, and they were in normal uniform as well. So right. by, by 1863, these, these wonderful uniforms but, have been found to be was, impractical. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you didn't want them, though, right? You yeah, absolutely yeah. do want them. Um, so you, you've got your Zouave there and they're, they're nice not only because of the, you know they're very different models to paint and these are looking at the sculpts these definitely are in fezes and pantaloons and yep. short jackets absolutely um you, and you've got a command sprue there so these maybe are intended to fight in quite small units you know just yeah. just two bases or you're going to use the other stands from the others and not all the command stands, I'm not sure. So that's the Zouars. But the other thing that you've got on here is you've got your cavalry and dismounted cavalry. Yeah. Um, now across the, th there's three sprues in here and it suggests that you're going to make, uh, uh, I didn't actually read the back of that one, two, four, six, there's, eight. So there's 24 cavalry, so it's 12 each. Across the three, eight on each sprue. Well, th this is a one-player starter set. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're going to make a single full-strength regiment of cavalry out of right. this, and have an equivalent number 
as dismounted. Yeah. Now, if you're um, it, it, so the Union and the and the Confederate cavalry are quite different in their in their approach to fighting, right? Yeah, the uh, Union infantry again, first day of Gettysburg, um, General Buford's cavalry, two divisions were around Gettysburg scouting. Uh, General Heath's Confederate army comes up, says there's militia over there. Militia, militia, yeah. and decide to engage, and that kicks off the. The Battle of Gettysburg, 5 a.m. Mm. on the July the 1st. Mm. Buford employs his troops as skirmishers. They dismount, fire several rounds from their carbines, breach loading carbines, jump on their horses, move to a different part of the battlefield mm. and fight again. Rather than a retreating action, mm. they're just engaging the regiments across yeah. the frontage. And they spend most of the morning just slowing down the Confederate advance. Yeah. Um, 2000... This is, a, this is a relatively small force yeah. of cavalry, but definitely on the Union side, by the, by the mid-war, it's in, it's in, ultimately it's mounted infantry. Yeah. They're also better armed, which I'm not sure comes across on the crib sheet, but the, the, most of the Union cavalry about this period have got repairs, right? Um, well, they're, they're breech-loading carbines with a breech -loading cartridge, carbines. Which, with a paper cartridge. Yeah. Pop that into the breech, percussion cap, bang. Yeah. Discard, reload. So there's right. no muzzle loading. Yeah. There's, so it was where most infantry is in the muzzle loading rifle. And it, it, if you didn't know this, because you may feel this is the era where the rifle comes in from, said, yeah, the, the guys, the guys ranked up are still their <laughs> rifled muskets, and what that means, they're not breech loading. The rifling is yeah. that is there's a twist, there's a groove cut yeah. into the barrel, which makes the munition spin. What it means and why it wasn't so popular in the Napoleonic War is it's very expensive to machine that precisely. Yeah. Um, but it also slows down your rate of fire. The, the ball's a lot tighter in a rifle yeah. than in a, than in a small well, the, musket. To be fair, they were using the thing called the mini bullet. Yes. Which was a Pre conical bullet uh, with, with a, a flange at the bottom with a, with a void. So it yep. would drop down the barrel, right, and then the explosion would cause the lever, uh, the the lead skirt, to open out, and then that would grip the well, rifle. That would grip the rifling. So, so they would address this problem. Yeah. That in the Napoleonic period, your riflemen, although significantly more accurate, and the way the point about that with the with the rifling is the ball spinning, which keeps it going straight for longer. It does lose energy in that spinning. Yeah. So the actual maximum range is less, but the effective range, the yeah. accurate range is way higher. And you don't just get that in um, in small arms and, and long arms. In this period, you get rifled artillery. Yeah. This is this is the this is the birth of rifled cannon yeah. on the battlefield. Um, so you may like your ten pounder, your parrot guns, and so forth. It started it off is, with six and twelve pounder Napoleons, which are smooth. Ball. Yeah, and then and they're then called they went, Napoleons because yeah. Napoleon would recognise them. And then they went over to a the parrot gun was uh, I think was still a smooth ball, but it was a breech loading. Oh right, okay. and then it was the Whitworth rifled cannon. I think was the right the later development, but even at Gettysburg they were still mainly. Main Smooth smoothbores smooth balls. and yeah. Buford only had um, three pounder light so, again such, so, as, such as Napoleon would yeah. have recognized yeah uh, so you're getting you're getting all of those things so the the speed with which you can fire a breech loading rifle yeah. is significantly faster and a big one is that you can reload on the ground Yes. You can reload, you know, when you're prone on your belly, you can reload your weapon. Now, they, they, did, they did, there were some units that practiced this, and this is where, like, you're sharp and you chose yeah. men and all that. There were some units that could just about get this done, but you couldn't take an, a, a battalion of conscripts and expect them, which is what this army is, right? Yeah. One of the things that you need to understand about these, most of these Union armies, certainly, they're pretty much brand new. Well, one of the other things that was, um, it was discovered after Gettysburg and many others is some of these rookie regiments, when they inspected them, they've got four or five rounds down the rifle because they've gone pop, reloaded, because they're already deafened by the, the hundred or so other weapons going off around them. Right. They don't realise they've not fired. Oh, so they just keep <laughs> shoving another one in and firing it? <laughs> So you just got lucky that the barrel didn't burst yeah. on you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so the... Oh, but the percussion cap's never going to engage then, is it? Yeah. So you, that's your Union Cavalry, very much you've got breech-loading carbines, which I'm hoping are better in the system. Let's have a look. 
Breech loading carbines have got a 24 inch range. There you go. Yeah. Um, rather than an 18 inch for your rifle musket, I think it was. Uh, oh no, rifle musket also 24. Oh, I'd have thought that there would have been a bonus for being breech loaders. But anyway, there's maybe some some special rule yeah. somewhere about it. Um, that's your Union cavalry, but your Confederate cavalry. They're not so well equipped, are they? No, they're still... Um, a lot of them didn't even have um, rifles. They probably had pistols and they cutlass. They probably had pistols, cutlass, sabre, yeah. whatever they could find. And Shotguns that, in a lot of cases. Yeah, and they were still trained to mash the, charge. The, the, the arm blanche, yeah. yeah they're going to they're gonna thrust at you at the charge. Um, and so the, the, the role's quite different. And if you want to skimp on a model count, you could probably paint all of the dismounted ones as Union... And all yeah. of the mounted ones <laughs> as Confederates. Yeah. Because the, the posing is quite interesting. Most of this mounted cavalry is posed with, with sword drawn, doing the sword thing. Yeah. Whereas the dismounted cavalry, you've got... And I, what I like about the dismounted cavalry, they're not just giving you dismounted figures that don't have bayonets. Right? Yeah. Unlike, unlike the, the ranked up infantry. is They've given you um, guys that are skirmishing. Yeah, they're even... gonna they're gonna fight in a much looser order because they are. This is yeah. this is eighteen sixties era skirmishers um, are gonna fight originally from horseback, and you get the horse holders with them. So you're gonna make a little diorama base. Yeah, so of guys with the horse. So the, the regiment would ride up. Mm. They would break into groups of four. Three would fire. One would hold the horses. Yeah, they would retreat back on the horses, move to another location. Jump yeah. off and carry yeah. on, um, uh, and and as impractical as that might sound, that's literally what day one of Gettysburg looked like for the Union. Yeah, that is that is what they did all day. The yeah the the Confederates were advancing from Chambersburg uh, west to east. Mm -hmm. They engaged Buford's cavalry. Buford two thousand seven hundred, I think it was about against about ten thousand Confederates. Held them up till sort of like mid morning. Mm. Mid morning, the sounds of the gunfires being heard. And Reynolds and Cutler from the first corps, they march onto the battlefield. Eleven corps behind them, because uh, Reynolds' first uh, brigade, the Iron Brigade, the elite of the U.S. Union, of the mm. Union, they arrive. They set up. The Confederates then hesitate and allow the Union then to take the high ground uh, south of Gettysburg. The, the, the critical day one high ground is at Cemetery Ridge? Cemetery Hill, yeah. Cemetery Hill, yeah. It's literally a cemetery. Well, there's the, there's the Gettysburg Seminary, which is a college, mm. which is a massive, great building. Yes. You were surprised at the size of it. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, they make one, if you want it. It is enormous. Yeah. Um, and Buford uses that as his reconnaissance. There's a cupola on the top of it. They use it as reconnaissance. So they, they secure the high ground. And then the Union marches up from the south along this high ground. Mm. Um, and then you've got Little Round Top and Big Round Top in the south, runs north up this ridge to Cemetery Ridge, just north, just south of Gettysburg, and they call it the Fish Hook. And on the first day, the, the Confederates could, in some texts, have pushed them off the high ground, and then they would have controlled it. Lee doesn't do that, mm. and the Union consolidate it on the second day, Lee charges on Cemetery Hill and Little Top and Little Round Top and Big Round Top on the second day, chucks all his forces at that. Late in the second day, General Pickett's divisions arrive, and Lee says, "Look, let's go for the centre. They've reinforced the outsides. Let's go for the centre on the third day." And we have Pickett's charge, the high water of the Confederacy. Lou Armistead with his hat on his sword, come with me. Mm. They advance in the middle. Lots and lots of tactical errors. Mm. Most of the Union troops that had fought on the wings on the first, the second day were moved to the middle to rest and recuperate, mm. and rookie divisions were put in in those two places. So you had, to, even though they'd only fought one day, you had veteran troops in a defensive position. They fought one day, but fought all day. Yeah. They knew what they were doing. They, knew, they yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that, that's Gettysburg, you see. This is about what he might get distracted. Uh, the chance to sort of blurt them things that he's been reading yeah. about. There's still a few more things in the box. Let's just have a look at a few. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be duplicated in the other box when we get to it. So let's just take a moment to have a look at these. Two beautiful flagships. Now, as I understand it, these are four regiments that fought at Gettysburg. I might be wrong, but I believe they are. Yep. 
So at the bottom of this, I've got the, got the Union, union sheet. So we've got the Iron Brigade, and we've got five regiments of those. So we'll have regiments, and there's three of those. Mm. And then we've got uh, various other infantry regiments. As with the they're time... state regiments, right? Yeah. So what we get is we get the, the Union National Flag and the the flag of the regiment or the state. So they come in pairs. regiments carry both? Yes. So they carry the the Union uh, union flag and their regimental flag. So if you look at the models, they're actually two standard bearers, yes. not just the normal yes. one. Now, in mine, I just put two Union flags on, but that's me. Yeah. I did it wrong. And we've also got cavalry pennants as well. Yes. But again, the cavalry pennants, the regiment specific. Yes. Yeah. So the Confederate one, which is uh, which which we've got here. So again, you've got specific regiments um, that we've mentioned. So the thing um, about the Confederate flag, is, I mean, we won't labour this point too much because <laughs> it upsets a lot of people. The square ones are cavalry pennants. The uh, rectangular ones are infantry pennants. Yes. Uh, do they use a similar system? Do they carry the battle flag? And like you, there's a battle flag, and then the the, the regimental flag, and then or the, the regimental state flag, flag or the state flag. On, yeah, so you normally see the two flags. Mm. Yeah, at one stage the um, I don't know if you've got it on there. Yeah, you do. Is they ca somebody came up with the idea is that they put the battle flag in the corner yeah. of a white flag. Yeah, a holy white flag. So when yeah. it's actually flattering, you only see the white flag. Oh, because it's in the corner by the by the flagpole. Yes, and that's mostly creased up or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I didn't realize that they used two flags either. The, yeah. And the cavalry pennant changes um, at, at different at different points. This flag isn't consistent. I don't know if you remember uh, when and why those changes. I don't. Let's say because my my study is Gettysburg, mm. and Jeb Stuart was off doing his own thing. The cavalry's not really there. Yeah, yeah they're not appearing in this film. Yeah. Um, they they did have a some action during the Gettysburg uh, off to the east with Pleasanton's cavalry, mm. but they don't really make that much of appearance in this. In there, yeah. Uh, there were a few cavalry on cavalry engagements, but mm. so it's, the the, uni, uh, the Confederate cavalry is not something that I've ever really sort of like followed because it's so so little of it uh, took place at Gettysburg. Yeah, 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 uh, because as we as we as we talk yeah. more about uh, about Gettysburg later. We do have the Louisiana Tigers flag. We do have a flag for the Louisiana yeah. Tigers. Yeah. Um, but bearing in mind that you're getting one of these for, you know, you've, you've got, what, six regiments and one Zouave regiment in here. Yeah. So although this doesn't look like you said well, there's only one, so, well, there are, what did you say, five regiments of Louisiana Tigers. Yes. And you're going to get one of these flags in every box and you're only going to get yeah. one regiment. So you've yeah. got enough, you've got enough to cover those. So one of the things that I'd, I'd noticed looking at all this battle for the, for, uh, the Civil War, it's how much, certainly on the Confederate side, most of the troops come from a handful of states. Yes. And, yeah. and that's because we think of, we think of places like uh, Texas today as having enormous populations. Again, yeah, well, it really didn't back then. But so many of the other Midwest states, far, far less. Yeah. Places like Virginia, very popular. So that, that's where much of the army is going to come from. So that's what we've got on here. We've got Louisiana. Yeah. Florida. Missouri. But these are probably places that fielded a couple yeah. of regiments, right? Alabama, Georgia, Virginia. Obviously, this is the army of, in the yeah. Gettysburg. It is yeah. the army of North Virginia. Yes, yes. But, but the, yeah. the armies that's raised in the West are tiny by comparison. Yes. They, they never reach substantial forces, which is why Sherman is able to do what he does yeah. uh, during his great mass. So that's, that's having I had a look at that. But um, as, as a start set for, for one player to get going, you know, to play Black Powder, you're going to get two brigades there. Um, is that is that what you want to get going? I think, I think it is. Um, and I'm I'm saying you probably to have a good game of Black Powder need a little bit more than that. Yeah. But that's a that's t there's nine sprues to paint there. That yeah. is enough to get you going to play the game. See how you feel about it. Yeah, seven seven hundred and fifty troops. Each, yeah. although they're ranked up, they're kind of molded shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Um, which is going to make it a little bit easier to paint. You know, that's still 1,500 legs. Even if you're painting them in a single stroke, front and back, yeah. that's 3,000 stro strokes <laughs> of a brush, and you're going to do it, you're going to take a lot more well, effort than that. At, at home, I'm on, on top of the cupboard, I've got my six mil 
six millimeter heroics yeah. and Ross Gettysburg. And then I'm just sprayed, sprayed grey out blue. No, no, they, they do have they do have a bit of brown on them. And, do they? You know, all right, okay. They've got faces and, that, and everything. I oh, know. Didn't do the eyes. <laughs> didn't do the eyes. All right. Um, so let's have a look at this box. See what's different. And mainly the difference in this, I can tell you, is just the scale of it. All right, and and uh, and the piece of scenery that you get. So this is. This is the big box. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the retail price is. I always do this. I should check the price yeah. before we do the video. So this is the the, um, the big one. Let's see what we get in there that's different. I mean, mostly it's a scale thing, all right? So we've got six regiments and one cavalry in the other. Box topper side is the same. We get our beautiful rule book. We get our Civil War booklet. We get a different bit of scenery. And this, I think, is like a stable. Yeah. We've got the, we got the, the horse doors. Yeah. But a two flawed one, again, that's nice. I like the fact that as they do different sets, they're putting a different piece of free scenery yep. in it. Same box topper. So here's your big difference. In the, in the, the two player the starter set, <laughs> the blue and the gray. And why is that important? Well, it's important because if you want to play straight out of the box and you're not planning on painting it all before you get going, when everybody looks the same, well, this is how you do it, right? Yeah. So, here you go for that. Oh, significantly more of the bases. We also get some nice... I don't think there was... Nice, there was dice in the other there one. There was yeah, dice we, in the other one. We, we got carried away with flags. <laughs> we got the cracker dice, packed by Morella, same two flag sheets. So, the difference really is the quantity. And it's still one cavalry regiment. It's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight infantry regiments for me. Yeah, same. So you're getting more than double. Because double was six and three, right? Yeah. And this is this is eight and three. Yeah. So you're getting four extra infantry regiments. Um, why is that significant? Well, because I think that that two brigades of four is is a bit more. It's getting a bit more like it. Yes. As as a game, but you're also getting it in both sets. So if you were wanting this, and because apart from the color, these are identical. Um, let's just let's just be a hundred percent certain of that. Yeah. Lay one over the other. I'm sure they are. <laughs> Gonna overlay it the right way. Yeah. yeah. They are identical. Yeah. Um, for the single player who's utterly committed, this is more the size of army that you want. Yeah. Because um, as, 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 as flashy and as exciting as it is, there really isn't much cavalry in a Civil War battle. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if we mentioned that the Zouaves through, there isn't another cannon on here. Um, but you do get one, one gun per infantry regiment. Yeah which is a lot of cannons, but it addresses that insofar as the expected battery size is, th is three guns yeah. in terms of the way that it's played. And that's the thing to come to with regards to the booklet. Oh yeah, so on, on the movement tray, that's what this piece is for. That's gonna hold your cannon. These are for your commanders, I, I think. The little square so, ones. Just, not just, seen. So we'd have a row of five yeah. on the front. Yeah, that's that, that's your frontage. Did I? I've got a ruler here. Are, are, are they? Are they? They look like ten. There's sixty mil. Sixty mil. Sixty mil so wide. Three hundred mil for one frontage. One regiment is a foot what long deployed yeah. in, in in battle formation <laughs> in line because it's the only meaningful formation. Yeah. And and over strength units are seven. Yeah. So you know you you can fill a lot of table with this, but fortunately black powder rules. Uh, um, they're more about morale and, and resilience than they are yeah. about number of shots. Um, and, wh and why that's going to be important is you do need to pl play deep. You do yeah. need to be deeper. And things, you can move through other units. It's a very high level kind of abstraction type game. So you are going to fight deep. And you are probably going to have... The, the reason I like Gettysburg as a, as a potential scenario is day one suits the war gamer really well? Yeah. Um, uh, maybe you're not going to refight exactly Gettysburg day one because it is a bit unequal in terms yeah. of forces. But you do have units arriving during the game. And what that's going to allow you to do is to build yourself an army, a relatively small army, so I can do day one Gettysburg. Yeah. 
with you know these are the regiments I'm going to build will be a place to start and as a and as a way to play a game you start with a small number of units and you add some more and say well if they yeah. if they're a foot long deployed I don't know how many of them I can get in my house anyway <laughs> you know um, yeah marching they're going to be they're still yeah. sixty mil wide um, so what do you think Mike like I say I, I think it's a fantastic set I saw the original. Um, Civil War set that you'd shown us and mm. I, I, I like the interest of it putting Gettysburg on it and giving us the Wars and the dismounted cavalry this new sprue yeah yeah. because of, like I say most most Getty, Gettysburg is, is either days two or three that's the real fact and it's just yeah. infantry it's just march forward and hopefully your guns kill their guns or you, yeah. you, with the guns and then you know but this the dismounted cavalry and a true meet in engagement mm. You know, you've got Lee and Meade are ordering their, their guys to c converge on the guns. Mm. And, you know, one of the units gets lost. You, you, you don't get a reinforcement that round. You know, yeah, you can yeah. swing it. It um, very much suits the war camera, I think. Yeah. You can play a game that's quite open-ended. Yeah. And yeah. there's that opportunity for the Confederates to take Cemetery Hill. And, that, that we're and then call it a win. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can set your own victory conditions. So um, the the booklet we didn't talk about. Uh, you've got the old booklet, Mike. Let's just see if yeah. it is. I, I get the feeling. I just it just kind of felt yeah. when I was looking at this, this that it was. That's the previous one. Is it? It looks the same. It looks. looks so is yours thirty three pages at the back? No, no. it's twenty five. Yeah, I thought there was a bit more to this new booklet. So having looked, they've, they've, they've remade this booklet, and this booklet is going to be quite important. So it starts, it's got you a little bit of history, which are your, which are your uh, seeding states. Yep, this is the same. This is the same. But then, whoa, hang on, go back two pages. Yeah, so we've got the Zouaves. I know, I've got the new book at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's going to be the same, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. So that's, I think it's where we got to the Zouaves is where it's different. Yeah. You've got them in there. And then we start, yeah. Hang on. Just looking. So then you've got the specific stats start coming yeah. in. And this is going to be important because the rather than covering the whole period, yeah. So from the page before where you're at, from here, it's different. And from here, what we've got is unit stats more unit stats, point systems, and so forth, and then a little bit more information about the specific generals, so, and then it picks up as being the same. So we start yeah. with Greenbrier, you got a bunch of scenarios at the back. Yeah. So what they've added to this is, is specific stats for the particular units, just broken down in a bit more detail and giving you points cost for them and so forth. And I think that that's really, that's really useful because that stuff is taken straight from the kind of, a, there is an official supplement for black powder for the Civil War, which if you're really into it, you probably want to get yourself. Scenario, Gettysburg Day 1. Gettysburg Day 1 is in there. Oh, there you go. Look at that. And what does it say that you need for Gettysburg Day 1? How wrong were we? So we just, we just did a quick count off camera on the numbers. So it's, it's recommending, it's saying, for its system, 10 and 14 regiments, 10 Union, 14 yeah. uh, Confederate on the day. But that is the total of possible forces involved. Yeah. Most of those units on the day didn't do much fighting, if any at all. No. Because it is an escalating battle, you know. Um, and, the, and the way you build the scenario is you put everything that was potential in there. Um, so 14, you had eight Confederate regiments in this one and six in the baby one. Yeah. So if you've got yourself both sets, you can yeah. you could do this. Which I know is a bit more than just the basic one. You could definitely fight this battle that particular battle out of, out of the main set because most of those Union troop, uh, Confederate troops are going to have been used up before the next ones yeah. get there. Because um, like you said, it was it was mainly a dismounted cavalry action. Well, the, the, on day one. Th this list is actually the infantry have already arrived. Yeah. Because it's, it's Reynolds rather than Buford. So yeah. this is after the cavalry. Of yeah, this is after the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. In, in, interesting, and you'll notice as you get to get his bug day too, the, the list just starts scaling up then. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, yeah. So my, my feeling, uh, my feelings about this, I, I, I think the way that they have expanded the range by adding this new new sprue has brought a lot to it. Yeah. And, and my feedback for Warlord about making new sprues, um, having reviewed the, the Napoleonic Epic, having looked at this, is every Brigadier is identical. Yeah. And I think they should try and find space on every sprue they ever make to have a different commander pose. Now, I, I realise, you know, maybe all your brigadiers were cloned at, you know, uh, yeah. the Virginia Military Academy or whatever it's called. Well, they're all, all West Point, weren't they? They all retired their commissions and went south. Yeah. So, yeah. Th were they all cloned at West Point? Well, but the point yeah. is that there's an, there's, an op there's a limited number of total sprues you're going to do. Yeah. And in this, it's not like you can go and get yourself a, like a German one, you know, and paint him a little bit different. It's like all of the yeah. Confederate commanders look... They do make some uh, metal and resin ones. They yeah. do make some unique sculpts. Because I was intrigued when we were at Warlord, they had the Metal Iron Brigade. Because mm. they yeah. wear their hardy hats, which has got the peak, the wide brim up the side, and yeah. the long black feathers. So that, they're still in metal. Uh, yeah. So maybe we're going to see another sprue down the line with the Iron Brigade. But the Iron Brigade is really limited. Yeah. If there's one Iron Brigade, there is, is that one, right? Yes. And it's Union. Yeah. The, the first core. First brigade, division, first brigade. Right. You know, so they are the one, one, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the one, one, one. The big red one, as they call them later. Uh, yes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, I, I think it's a start. I think I think it's good. I think it's an improved offer from the one before. Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, nice to have the scenery included in it. Full set yeah. of rules, so you can go to other places. I think I think it's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to taking this home and painting. Indeed, you get you get to take the big one home yeah. for Christmas. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Cheers. If you enjoyed what you'd seen, why don't you come check us out on modelingforadvantage.co.uk. There's loads of different ways you can support the channel over there, including merch, that kind of stuff.